Yeah. Good morning to all, and I welcome all the participants to the seventy-first uh, SCFI Roundtable Expert Group meeting. Today, uh, before I speak further, uh, today is the fourteenth August, and tomorrow we are uh, India is celebrating the seventy-fifth Independence Day. So, congratulations to all. In advance for the 75th Independence Day tomorrow, and topic today again remain is a continuation of the what we discussed last time, the role of AI in general in for patient care as well as in COVID-like situations. Uh, today, Dr. Sunila Garg is not going to join. I will request Dr. Arun Agarwal. He is there. So. Sir, you will be. Yes, Dr. Kandra. Yeah, uh, we missed you last two sessions. Yes. Uh, and uh, I will request you to chair today's session. And before I <laughs> hand over to you, I will like to just give in two minutes a update on the COVID situation as on date, and then I will hand over to you, sir. Thank you. So let me share screen. uh swarup you can you can share i think this is visible to all yeah yes so if we see the covid situation uh for the last almost 6 weeks situation is a little bit stabilized but it is not declining also and uh, almost 38 to 40000 new cases per day we are seeing in india and if you see the globally also the trend you see the just graphs globally also compared to the last week and there is a slight upward trends and india is just as i earlier said around 7 to 8 weeks it is controlled around 38 to 40,000 ke new cases a day. Maharashtra and the rest of the states in India, except the Kerala, Kerala is still keeping finger crossed. Around 20, 22,000 cases per day are being contributed by the Kerala state alone. Karnataka is now settling down, and rest of the Tamil Nadu, Andhra also, uh, rest of the country except the Kerala is. seems to be settling down and delhi also for the last one week between uh, 50 and 60 cases a day and if you see the global situation as per who weekly report in the last week compared to the prior week globally there is a 4% increase in the cases as well as deaths also there is a 2% increase in deaths across the world and as per who regions last week the cases were contributed maximum by the region of americas and then uh, it was uh, western pacific region countries so americas region contributed 14% and that have decreased by 4% in that region and in uh, western pacific 19% increase in the number of cases and 46% deaths uh, have been noted so the country level the highest number of new cases were reported from the united states of america on uh, this week around 7.34 lakhs which are 35% increase compared to the prior week india again has shown overall in the country a 2% decrease compared to the last week and iran 20% increase brazil 8% decrease indonesia again has uh, this time has shown 18% decrease in the new cases and uh, as per uh, one per report in the media the del in maharashtra state overall 66 cases of delta plus variant has been reported and delta plus uh this variant has caused uh five deaths in maharashtra state 
So vaccinations given in India as on date are 53.61 crores. So this was about the COVID situation update. Now I hand over to Dr. Agarwal. Dr. Arun Agarwal ji, please continue the session now. Yes, thank you, Dr. Kanda. The only, before I start the real session, the only worry is Kerala. Yes. Numbers are Professor Bijar Mishra are continuously being yeah. around 20,000. 20,000, yeah. You see, 20,000 in Kerala means, uh, if, if I say, if there are 20,000 cases in Kerala, that means uh, in India uh, should have 5 lakhs uh, new cases. I mean, why it is happening? We are not able to understand. It's it's a worrisome status. Yes, I mean, thoda bota, if there is little increase, it's okay. But anyhow, that is one worry. And um, just yesterday, I was inquiring for my for the information of my colleague in some of the big corporate hospital like Apollo or Max. And uh, for the last seven days, there is not a single new case entry. So that only that not only reflects Delhi, that reflects practically a big zone of North India. Dr. Kalra, what I'm trying to say, otherwise, if there is a fresh crop, these few hospitals get reflected because of the reflection. Yes, yes, yes. So that is a plus point. So with this remark, uh, today we are going to talk something which is already very challenging. And uh, before I joined uh, this session, I was just spending little time in, uh, I'm very fond of Vyond Channel. And Vyond Channel was uh, just now covering the status of startups in India. And uh, Dr. Arun Jamkar also mentioned that 10% patents are medical. So this is one field which is perhaps uh, uh, India is taking lead. Yeah. And that is the lead, uh, that is the topic of artificial intelligence in various, with various applications. And uh, our expert speaker is our own. And very especially for me, my own Hamnam, Dr. Arun. <laughs> <Hamnam. Yes. laughs> so we will request him to start and then we will like to learn something yeah. from him and then we will go for active discussion. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Agarwal. Uh, Dr. Kalra, what I was suggesting, um, yeah. give you a COVID status. Uh, yeah. There will be uh, some small talk or maybe five, five minutes addition yeah. about uh, the therapeutic status of present management because yeah. everything is changing so much yes sure and next week yeah we will do that yeah, yeah. Um, sure. so that is very important the uh -huh. therapeutic status yes changing yes. trend ha uh, changing trends because everything is changing so fast yeah uh, now i'll just uh, share my screen Is it seen? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, your sound is not coming. Okay. 
Is sound there? Yeah, now it's there. Now, last time I just talked about. Uh, um, wait a minute. I just talk about uh, how AI uh, is uh, affecting all uh, fields of medicine, and I gave a uh, lot of insight about uh, how what AI and uh, say different models of AI and uh, variables, and then in fact uh, I gave uh, little details about uh, whole concept of AI with ML and uh, all those technologies and types of emails and then supervised learning, unsupervised learning. And one of the big, all those things have been already uh, taken care. And one of the biggest uh, thing that we are having is uh, image handling because there are maximum, uh, maximum number of, uh, uh, say, uses is in image handling. So uh, image handling, then uh, I gave some examples, say, uh, Image handling has been used in uh, diagnosing skin diseases. In fact, uh, uh, there is a one company called First Derm, where you have to just upload an image of the skin disease and then they give a diagnosis. And I think this is all on AI. And uh, diabetic retinopathy is also being used uh, very often. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it is getting strength. And then FDA has already approved uh, the preventive management by, uh, say, uh, screening, uh, say, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, then I talk about mammography, where one of the biggest success stories are there. Now, then similar thing, we have uh, something about uh, digital pathology. And I think, uh, actually, digital pathology was uh, approved by FDA before, but then they were behind. Now, there's something happening is big is instead of uh, an audition pathology, everybody knows about because it's simple and to diagnose and then compare. And there's something called as the 3D imaging. So instead of uh, sending a slide, you can just try directly send a tissue and then they will take a 3D, uh, say what you call it as a, uh, imaging of whole thing. And then it can go beyond the sections. I think this is one of the biggest discoveries. Uh, I'm not going to talk in much detail about this. And then uh, nowadays, uh, uh, all these things are available. In uh, theater itself, where a tissue can be given, are you able to listen to the sound? Dr. Kalra? Yes, yes. Sound nahi sunai de rahi hai. Ek minute. Mere ko Dr. Kalra, he's talking about the video sound. Huh. Video sound. Video sound. Video sound. Uh, when you're sharing the screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. sound share sound. Okay, sound. Yes. Now this is wonderful. And you have a tissue available the picture you take as a biopsy and where you have to wait for 15 to 20 minutes with half an hour. Now that whole tissue can be uploaded in the theater itself. And the diagnosis will come and then whole image will be there to discuss. I think this is uh, some of the wonderful thing which, is, which will change all management. Okay, let us uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm talking. I was talking about radiology. Now these are the various platforms available, and these all platforms are available for free. And uh, now TensorFlow is by Google. 
and then the uh, people can develop uh, ai based systems uh, diagnosis of image handling by tensor flow i was just giving you one talk to uh, one of the college and then uh, there was one student uh, who talk about that and then he wa he wanted to do okay. some he wanted images of uh, yeah i'm on the phone the diffraction check kar raha hai shaam ko kitne baje hello sound check okay i'm audible yeah i'm on theek hai okay so dalra can you mute yourself acha samne hi hai na acha theek hai so uh, i just trying to help him out then he developed that whole model uh, based on tensor flow and then i was just uh, giving him all the data of uh, x ray chest and everything and then i asked him uh, what are you doing are you for uh, uh, so are you for getting some uh, are you did you pass it to be or uh, are you joining some startup to my surprise that guy said i am doing 12th standard and this was for uh, getting admission in good in uh, american college so i think so much has uh, penetration of this technology is gone uh, i'm not going to that okay. and uh, siemens is coming with big way with all these radiology diagnosis but these are the various levels where image handling is being used say x ray chest uh, detection of lung nodule detection of pneumonia detection of vertebral fractures then ct scan ct angio mr angio everywhere uh, we have all these technology available and if you can see uh, the now this is the frontal x ray and the lateral x ray then you have output and then all these diagnoses are available all these diagnoses are available and uh, they are reasonably better then even uh, x ray say radiologist if you can sit down average is 0.69 where the dual net is 0.721 and the best part of the story is uh, uh, most of the x ray chest they are normal and the normal x ray chest is 100% reported better by uh, ai system so these are the various uh, uh, what do you call as the databases of x ray chest i'm not uh, just giving you uh, some details and these are the various diagnoses which can be done with ai system and these are the these are for uh, mri i think uh, same level of uh, competence is there with the ai system and then we have something called as chester the ai radiology assistant so very everywhere uh, these are the one of the success stories of medical imaging now this now one of the thing that we can uh, detect say rely upon is a coronary angiography and the, now with the coronary ct angiography i think uh, the say cardiologist can more rely on ai system than on the radiologist and now these are the way, various papers where uh, they say they are evaluating the ai system and these are the say deeper layers and hidden layers and everything going on then uh, i talk about uh, corona last time i'm not going to say anything more in epidemiology i talk about uh, how the blue dot is doing then drug discovery uh, i just talked last time and then uh, one day uh, I... called uh, bacitinib and uh, if you can see though the, the present status of uh, bacitinib the beauty of bacitinib bacitinib is it has been entirely identified by ai system going through thousands of molecule for repurposing drug i know that this is the present present status that remdesivir with uh, bacitinib is uh, one of the best combination for say um, the patients in icu then we talk about icu how uh, the ai system can uh, correlate uh, with uh, networking of all the all the ventilators and this can lead to going uh, all this management to the uh, say level of a uh, rural area the vaccine we talk then we were coming to how the it is developing for the clinical management and i talk about uh, cytokine storm and now i did my phd Uh, in interleukins and interferons, long time back, and then I have varied 
say we did a fascinating study about uh, interleukins and when the moment uh, i read about uh, cytokine storm getting through the il6 and then i thought we should use and il6 uh, say a monoclonal antibody called tocilizumab which has been presently used and i wrote everywhere including BJ, bmj and uh, nobody published that's why I, at the end i put it on uh, linkedin that uh, how the tocilizumab could be used uh, in managing cytokine storm maybe uh, there might be multiple intelligent nodes across the uh, across the world and they started using now uh, Uh, we are into monoclonal antibodies and uh, there are several monoclonal antibodies are coming and then uh, these are the two which have been given uh, the clearance by fda casirivimab plus uh, satrovimab intravenous infusion is giving a better results at the same time uh, the people were using uh, bamelivimab plus uh, italesivimab and then uh, fda has said that this doesn't give any better result so i think that's why i was suggesting in our talk we should use the latest therapeutic status of all these so uh, we could go through ai systems to find out exactly what is the state of each of these drugs and uh, how it is exactly going and dr kalra uh, this is a very interesting platform called covid 19 research explorer now you uh, just click it there and you could go to uh, any of the latest studies about uh, the covid i think uh, this is the which we can do there is something called as a covid scholar as well and uh, uh, this is all the success stories of ai in the cancer that ibm watson is doing using oncology then uh, say uh, botan et al develop ai system to restore in quadriplegia Uh, then there are various. Uh, these are the success stories of AI system to identify how can we treat. So uh, the my suggestion is uh, there has been a tremendous development going on in these areas, and we are not able to utilize our own experiences and success stories. And therefore, uh, what I suggested was uh, we could have a cluster-based analysis. depending on clinical picture radiology hormone status cytokine status uh, the hormone status could be the serum ferritin pro calcitonin pro bnb interleukin 6 and then suppose we put them together and then put them into what is called as an unsupervised uh, learning in a say a machine learning then it will give you the clusters and then we could find out what are those clinical clusters and identify what we are doing with intervention now the now these interventions uh, could act from ai system where uh, we have cognitive domain analysis and then uh, we monitor these patients and find out what are the success what are the uh, what is happening to the treatment protocols and then uh, find out the outcomes morbidity mortality survival rate and quality of life and this could go again back with a supervised learning to the interventions so that this learns and therefore uh, the moment we do uh, come into this loop and because we are just uh, identifying the real time management we'll get latest management protocol which has been used and which are more successful so i this i think uh, i don't know whether uh, anybody in world is working on this but this is my model which would improve the uh, status and management of covid uh, so uh, what is required for india is network all clinical data across the globe using database handling models and crystallize the data cognitive domain analysis of infodemic and then real time dynamic uh, outcome of all these interventions now the advantage is sometimes there might be some micro successes there uh, they can't be reported but then this could come into this platform and these micro successes could be identified and all these uh, based on ai we could extrapolate these micro successes in spite of small sample size and then i will it would be available for all clinical establishments across the globe and with uh, we, it will help a clinician to make a mature opinion now the advantage in the disadvantage in india 
is uh, usually uh, most of the patients are being treated in public sector and they don't have uh, what you call as EMR and ESR systems. So I had suggested that all the case records of patients uh, treated in these hospitals should be digitalized so that uh, once you digitize, this could be available for uh, say continuous uh, monitoring of these patients. Now, uh, AI has been used in all these uh, manners, early detection, diagnosis of infection, monitoring, contact tracing, then projection of cases of mortality and development of drug. Now, uh, there's something very peculiar has happened. Now, uh, you can just uh, get a cough sample of uh, a patient in front of app. So just ask your patient to cough. And then uh, depending on that cough, uh, somebody has created a algorithm on AI where just on a uh, coughing sample in, in, in front of that app, they were able to diagnose COVID. This has to be, uh, this has already validated. I think that's one of the things uh, which, uh, which is one of the successes which need to be followed. Then uh, people were coming uh, in big way and we don't want to contact. And then AI was used for face recognition instead of you know, giving in a, a thumbprint. At the end, I just want to talk about uh, the uh, eye doctor, what's the drug dispensing ATM, uh, which based on symptom-based algorithm. As I told you, it has three parts. So it's an attempt to go beyond current uh, daily medicine model and support Indian citizens to get affordable healthcare within their vicinity. So uh, we have three parts, a kiosk, algorithms, and dispensing. In a kiosk, where the patient sits in front, and then because we want to uh, have uh, what you call it as uh, personalized uh, data, and it has to be made safe, everybody has to enter, uh, say all, the, all the patients and all citizens, suppose we are putting that kiosk in a village, so one doctor has to go through the patient record and examine everybody and then enter the data in the kiosk. And then once he comes, he has to come with the Aadhaar card and then fingerprint, and then it will be validated. And then it goes into uh, say all those questions. And before he starts, uh, we take uh, with the point of care devices, his blood pressure, his uh, pulse oximeter, his uh, respiration, and uh, all those six details. And then uh, anything abnormal, uh, we have created a loop by which uh, an ambulance can be called. Then he sits in front and talks about symptoms. And because it's only on the symptoms, it asks you all those uh, too many questions. And then, uh, and then uh, it gives you a diagnosis. And at the end, uh, the machine which is attached directly dispenses the drug. So these are the uh, components biometric authentication, weighing, thermometer, oximeter, blood pressure, ECG. We could have a camera and then uh, the questionnaire and the drugs. So uh, this is a symptomatic treatment. There, there are a lot of limitations. So uh, we need to find out the allergies, identification of the presence, criticality. But then best part of the story is the, the, the geotagging. So suppose at the end, uh, through the symptoms, we diagnose some, something as malaria. We could be able to identify and uh, do an, uh, say, endemicity of that whole thing. And suppose we are 250,000 gram panchayas. Suppose we put all these, then uh, we could uh, be maybe able to map everything and it can support a healthcare policy maker. So I just going into detail, registration and then diagnostic process, I'm just going to call and give you a little detail. They collect the vitals. Then if it is beyond limit, uh, call uh, ambulance. Then major health-related issues. Then also um, referral. And then check hospitalization. And then check duration. And then uh, this whole thing uh, will find out that if any anywhere we have red flag questions. It's and, finished in five minutes. OK, we can go into details. We can have time here. for interaction, yeah. OK. So, uh, I will just go into, I think I will just skip all these because I talk of all these. And this is all, uh, what you call it as uh, points. This will look like this, all those, because this has made simple. And uh, all these eye doctor, 
these are the snapshots and at the end i just wanted to talk about home care or maybe um, it could be used by an anganwadi worker or all home care assistants where we could uh, we can have a tab where all the data is available through the cloud and then it has point of care devices uh, what you want is uh, we can create a sort, sort of ola model that you could have uh, regional centers uh, in, in in every area where the home care assistant can go or an anganwadi worker can go and then uh, the tablet will have all those point of care devices which i doctor has and then uh, it will be improving a management directly under supervision of uh, the physician sitting in that center so this is what is called as we call them health mon and uh, this could now this was a model which we created for public health where it could be uh, say public primary health center and regional health say regional centers so everywhere it can go up and then the whole data is available to dho and district hospitals so this is a model uh, which can again improve the quality of healthcare in the uh, maybe uh, urban area or the rural area thank you i think uh, before i start my comment after listening to professor jamkar uh, i will request all my colleagues to give him a big clap thank you thank you dr jamkar the way you have collected your thoughts put your mind into it and your technical expertise i it seems that the the whole of the medical scenario is changing so fast uh, dr kalra do you remember there was a serial star trek around 20 years back i recollect that serial and what i feel it seems that perhaps in near future the patient will walk in front of you and you will be able to diagnose with the 3d camera and 3d microscope with you and perhaps you will come to the diagnosis Dr. Your, uh, there is you, a movie. You know. There is a movie called Passenger. Yes, which yes. has an aircraft going traveling for hundred uh, years, and there is something called as Auto Doc. Actually, I usually show that movie because of short of time. That is what yes. is the of medicine. Yes, <laughs> what I mean to say, the three D printing of the histopathological sample, which has become a reality now. and uh, you correctly said that whatever is the technology my first question to you is that uh, uh, what is the ultimate uh, how much india is contributing in development of such technologies i think uh, uh, we contribute tremendously uh, basically uh, we being uh, cost effective in technology yes uh, now i work with persistent systems and uh, maybe more than 1000 uh, various industries in us uh, we are helping them to develop their technology now to tell you uh, i have a lot of limitations about nda now we are developing in, in uh, software for a total knee replacement with a robotic technology and uh, we are giving it to one company which is into uh, what is called as a 3d prosthesis so taking all the images of mri you can develop a exact prosthesis for that man which is customized and be, it being a 3d it is porous and therefore the haversian canals and all those canals can go inside and then it will develop as a part of bone and this whole thing is being done here Where the every software and everything we are giving to America. Want to yes. add? Uh, you are you are talking about the three D customized implant. Implant. Yeah. Relation to, to yeah. bone or in relation to. Uh, can I, doctor? Doctor Agarwal, yes. can I comment? Yes. 
yes so, yes uh, yeah. Ashok, i mean thank you come. thank you very much thank you dr jamka wonderful presentation and 3d printing and 3d uh, custom made implants and become a reality i mean 20 years back i used to struggle in some develop on some of the facial implants which now has become a reality we have to send the 3d uh, data and then the complete thing is uh, sent so i think uh, ai has got a definite role to play in our scientific advancement and also about one point i want to share uh, dr <coughs> shrinath reddy to his public health foundation of india had developed the swas slate which was actually digital uh, screening of all the ncds across the country and it was a very successful model which which i was also involved in some of the development and i think is a is a great uh, requirement and need of the time in our country with such a vast rural base to develop a a, a rural screening model for ncds and that can that will also give us a statistics data and other parameters to plan for a uh, our national policies more effectively and i think uh, the uh, of course i doctor is a mandatory part is a, something which is welcome but before the i doctor and i was shared that the government of maharashtra at least they have and some of the other state have allocated 15000 rupees to asha workers for a purchase of a smartphone so uh, holding a smartphone with all these gadgets and all this software uh, has become a reality and uh, we can definitely push this uh, rural screening for ncd as a as a ground reality and ground need for the country thank you so, uh, what do you use of this eye doctor because we have all those algorithms we could yeah. make it for plastic surgeon for a cardiologist for a urologist and then uh, while the patient is waiting in your uh, waiting room for your his appointment you could just go through all that and fill in the algorithm and then the doctor inside will get directly that do that data so that he 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 can spare all that time and he can talk better and he can treat better i think this has a, a various uh, models it would be used in a busy opd where 10 machines could be used and then uh, the doctor sitting in opd can West uh, say can spare all that time for management. Thank you. Dr. Jamka, one thing, one minute, Doctor Jamka, have mm -hmm. you studied that model by Rajasthan state government? They have given some tablets to the Asha worker ah. for some MCH program. Mm -hmm. Are you aware about that? Yeah, yeah, same, same model. So, um, how efficiently they are able to use that? Is it useful, replicable? Uh, we have three problems. one internet connectivity second electricity and third is literacy so uh, our models don't work because there is no internet so no electricity so, so, <laughs> so, so it all, comes to this same yeah all ai models are based on internet connectivity internet connectivity it is cloud based yeah. and in spite of all the development uh, we don't have better internet even in urban area Yeah. Actually, we have overcome this problem by two ways. One is a data stored offline, and it mm -hmm. is shared only whenever they go online. And second is a solar cell attached to the uh, tablet or a handheld device, so yeah, that yeah. the electricity problem is taken care. Yeah. The solar solar recharging of the battery. So, uh, Doctor uh, Agarwal, can I come in? Yes, yes, please. yeah you know so this is a continuation of last week's conversation which you have had and i think you were not present so you may not be aware yes, yes, yes. in terms of uh, uh, the issue which i had raised and the major issue is, is some of it has got discussed now that you can talk of technology but technology has to become an enabler to ensure that the patient at the end of the day gets the best value out of the technology if i don't get that value you can talk about technology for 100 years but it has no value to me because as you know and i would like to correct a bit of a data in for india 80% of the patients are accessing private sector healthcare in our country vis a vis only 20% are going to the public healthcare system now the first thing is the private sector has to understand how they can reach out to the remotest part of the country and that is why the ayushman bharat concept was brought in where we fought you know uh, vigorously to convince the government that they should allow ppp at the health and wellness centers 
you will be surprised to know that in the health and wellness centers not a single private sector has come forward to partner with the government to work together to bring in such technologies in a manner that it is made accessible to the citizens and we are still struggling to understand and as you very rightly said many of you without electricity without a broadband uh, connectivity how is the technology going to help you i am in hyderabad these days and even at a, a developed place i find service providers not able to give the brand bandwidth in the manner it is required so you see how you forget about rural you talk about urban you are not getting it there so my contention is first thing everybody should call for and ask for is a good strong infrastructural facility till that doesn't come this technology of ai and other things which we are discussing is good for those countries who have the infrastructure and they now want to reach out to india because they are pre presuming that we have the infrastructure so first let's build the infrastructure in the interest of the patients which is completely missing completely completely missing several studies have revealed that that we need to strengthen the primary health centers the ashas and others not only by giving tablets tablets doesn't help the tablet has to be made functional and this is where i would like you know our expert group to formalize a kind of a strategy that how do we go about formalizing that strategy to strengthen the infrastructure for which government is all the time talking about you know uh, having resources do you all know that there is something called universal Sub service obligation fund you pay 10% of your telecom bill every month towards that fund and that fund is supposed to be used for building telecom infrastructure and you will be surprised to know that 80% of that fund is still lying unutilized but you pay every month 10% from your bill but you never demand that why this 10% is been taken when you are not able to utilize that money which we are paying knowingly or unknowingly so the uso fund should be used for such purpose and that should be the demand which should go from this expert group to the policy makers i would like to stop here thank you and chairperson i would like Dr. to be Mishra. excused i would like to be excused because i have to go to another meeting urgently okay but i, uh, can, I can tell you where i will get some answers from dr arun to my questions of last week but maybe it will be kept uh, one to one we may keep answering uh, offline on the issue professor mishra just i will hold you for 30 seconds in continuation of what you have mentioned i agree with you that our the slogan of medical fraternity do no there is we should not do any harm to the patient right so whatever technology we are adopting that has to be adopted in the best benefit of that patient number 1 number 2 we have to remember that as compared to many countries all over the globe in india there is one thing in abundance and that is the women men power right rather right. keeping that women men power away you are trying to bring uh, practically a negative uh, wave because otherwise the employment of various kinds get jeopardized and number 3 yes these all the new technologies are most welcome but i think it has to be a combination of technology and as we always say touch that two t will important that there has to be a touch there has to be technology and then the best outcome for the patient thank you okay. Uh, i will get i will get your email and uh, maybe have a zoom talk with the, with the dr mishra yeah thank you thank you very much so uh, chairperson can i be excused please, today thank please. you thank all the best uh, uh, arun can i come in for a minute uh, arun yes yes, yes, yes. Yeah, i i think uh, 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 professor arun excellent presentation uh, uh, 
uh, I think technology has come to stay, and I think I'll, I'll focus on one sentence that you said. I said we uh, that you said that we have to use the gains of technology and use it. Uh, I, I think you said why you said why uh, use the time that the doctor saves. I think that's very crucial in this time of artificial intelligence, in this time of technology. As Arun also said, I think empathy, compassion, and touch are very important, and I think there has to be a balance between both. Otherwise, just purely focusing on technology is not going to help. We need to use technology. We new need to use artificial intelligence to ensure that uh, quality affordable healthcare is affordable to all but we should also keep in mind that we need to spend more time with the patient and communicate with the patient and his family i think that's a very very crucial part of what we do thank you great yes i just uh, wanted to answer uh, something that yes. dr uh, um, earlier speaker said about uh, healthcare infrastructure and one thing I want to drive your attention, now we had been successfully using ASHA workers for controlling epidemics and giving a primary health care. And all these uh, ladies, they are paid 10, less than 10,000 rupees per month. And your uh, even uh, say housemaid gets more salary. Yes. So uh, government has to do something in long term. And then the budget of the public health is in uh, say uh, 10,000 and 20,000 crores. So I think uh, we need to uh, give some, uh, maybe a brainstorming decision that the remuneration has to be, uh, say, to uh, what you call it as address the needs and what are the, whatever the duties they are duty doing for the public health. This is the greatest bottleneck what? for the public health program because everything is dependent upon the ASHA workers. And ASHA workers are even being paid less than 5,000. Absolutely right. But the basic policy, Dr. Kalra, as a worker will be paid depending upon the performance and incentivization. Yes. I, if I'm not wrong, there are certain places where our ASHA workers are definitely getting more money because of their dedication and the outcome-based parameter, whatever has been decided. But I fully agree, they are so less paid that there is always a unified unsatisfaction on yes, in yes. that particular group all yes. over the country. Actually, there have been a strike by ASHA workers across I the know, country. Yeah, yeah. Many times, increase many in remuneration, and I think, and that's completely that they must be paid. In fact, one of the trials which we did with the Swastlet in Maharashtra, and we could increase their uh, patient cover by almost 20% to 30%. And the government accordingly increased their sell, uh, wages for that particular month because we increased the number. I endorse and endorse. And also support the Dr. Alach statement. There was a first uh, world conference on AI in Dubai about two years back. And this was a very uh, big discussion on that. And the, at, the, at the close of the session uh, conference, the message was that AI is something which is very extremely welcome in medical teaching and medical uh, treatment but it cannot replace the expert and experienced fingers and experience, expert eye. Uh, and it has to be, again, uh, with the empathy and touch of the patient is very vital, which cannot be compensated by AI, role of AI in medical, edu medical education at least. And I think that's, that's very important. Medical education still needs some of the highly experienced and dedicated teachers rather than rely entirely on AI because the error factor is still there in the AI. I mean, uh, we have been using this in ICU, Burns ICU, that was the world's first Burns ICU was made in Oman. I was member of the team of that. And we could get the same quality of treatment for all Burns patients across Oman by sitting and controlling everything from the uh, Kala Hospital in uh, 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 Muscat, Oman. So that uh, the standard of uh, care of Burns patient across Oman is same. And it is all can be controlled because the central centralized ICU of Burns I see in Oman. I think this is a very great role to play, but it has to be used very judiciously in our country. We honestly declare that AI systems or all these technology can never replace doctors. That's right. Assist. Let us say we are talking about AI system for X-ray chest. If a radiologist is able to screen 50 X-rays, maybe 20 X-rays per hour, he, can, he will be able to do 40 X-rays per hour. Yes. yes. And the costing will be reduced. And uh, the biggest advantage that we have, 
not exploiting is the number of city uh, investigation that we do. The population has suddenly become a strength. Now I know one company called uh, Krishna. They do 10,000 X-rays per day and maybe 500 to 1,000 MRI and CT scan per day. So uh, such a data, uh, because all AI will depend on data. If you have more data, that becomes more confident and uh, say more competent. So I think uh, we need to pass on this message that all these uh, population of patients and the data can be used for AI. Yes, I think, can we see comment of Dr. Rai? Dr. Rai? Sir, thank you very much. Man, you know, it was so interesting uh, information. Really, it, uh, we are surprised and we are feeling very happy that artificial intelligence is going to replace the senior most consultants also. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> one thing, one thing more. Thank you, Mr. No, no, sir. Sir, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I will, I will quote one thing. You know. Uh, and at some place, I was asked to speak something about the family physician and for the medical profession, how it is changing. I just give you, I will take only two minutes. I just started. A time was there when there was only doctor and the patient. There was no in between them. And those patients and doctors were having a very close relation. Even the doctors used to be considered as the family member because the families were not taking any decision without the help of the doctor. Yes. Then what happened? And they were having and, and what fees they were getting. Somebody was bringing five kg, five kg of the milk. Somebody was bringing this, but the relations were very nice. Then what happened? Then what happened, sir? Then they started say, the, the insurance companies came because the well doctor, you are saying 40 percent, 30 patients every day, and you are not charging anything. Don't you keep on seeing the patient, and uh, we will charge the money for you. Okay, sir. Then doctor became a little greedy. Yaar, sala achha, amko udar se paisa mil so they started taking. And after that, the corporate people came, corporate hospitals came. The corporate hospitals came and they told, well, Dr. Gupta, you are so intelligent. You are having so much clientele. How much you are earning, sir? I'm earning about 4 lakh rupees per, per month. Sir, why you are wasting your time? I will give you 10 lakh rupees per month. You come and join my organization. They started joining. Here again the grid came and our Hippocrates sitting in the haven started crying. I never gave this message to the doctor's community. And after that, what happened? The pharma companies came. Pharma companies also maligned their community. And ultimately, which I used to, I, 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 I have spoken about three or four years back. And ultimately, the artificial intelligence will be managed. Uh, uh, corporates will bring the artificial intelligence. And all the superior doctors will be asked to sit in the house. So the, that day is coming. And one more thing I would like to comment over here. What is going to happen about the medical negligence? If, by the way, machine is doing some negligence, who will be blamed? At least the I, doctors I will be saved from that. that. <laughs> Doctor, Doctor Rai, I was coming to that because ultimately, if there is harm or there is a medical negligence, of course, this particular Ooh. system is yet to yet get yet. any legal uh, <laughs> approval. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sir, first thing yes. that will come to identify the competence and mistakes made. Yes. Now, uh, we hardly do any clinical audit in a hospital. And even if the NHS does a clinical audit, they do for some small thing. I am with uh, TCS advising them to develop a platform for clinical audit where whole protocols can be entered through AI system, and even a small mistake done by a physician can be diagnosed. So I think we're coming back that the technology can help you to make less mistakes. It seems that there's Actually, a vicious circle. Actually, yeah. Dr. Agrawal. Whatever is best contribution, huh. and that is I, done. Yes, yes. Most of these uh, AI platform, which uh, we were discussing, the first they make us sign a disclaimer that these are based on the data and uh, they are excused from any medical liabilities. This is the disclaimer which most of the uh, AI uh, platforms are uh, making us sign. I mean, this yeah, was yeah. the point discussed. I wish discussed. individually, 
डॉक्टर अशोक गुप्ता है और डॉक्टर अरुण अखबार और डॉक्टर जाम करकुट मेक इट द प्रॉब्लम सर द प्रॉब्लम विल बी एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द ट्वेंटी परसेंट सर्विसेज आर बींग केटेड बाई द पब्लिक सेक्टर एंड एट्टी परसेंट बाई द प्राइवेट सेक्टर the emr is not there the best data which the public sector is having they are not sharing and they don't have the digital the yes. again we will be lacking somewhere so as far as the, we are discussing about the infrastructure i 100% agree with you all sir until unless we are not having the superior infrastructure the things we will have to face in the future also very rightly sir i think uh, is ritu there uh, yes. डॉक्टर आज नहीं है अच्छा आ, ये ये चीज उसमें रह गई है क्योंकि लीगल अभी तक अप्रूवल लास्ट टाइम आई आस्क विच इज अप्रोप्रेट अथॉरिटी टू रेगुलेट दिस ए आई वेदर इट इज ए टेली कम्युनिकेशन इन मिनिस्ट्री और इज हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री और who will Sir, regulate all these gadgets need to be approved by fda fda means drug control department in ah, india it is drug uh, control department the kiosk, kiosk which i showed yeah. is manufactured by a company called india health link and which has been approved by fda us yeah every gadget they are putting on point of care devices has it's to be approved approved by fda fda yeah so indian fda definitely will take this i'm not sure what are they are doing the what is they are thinking on no, that point is, alex point is dr kalra i want to raise approved by fda but the legal liability because is a clinical will probably lie with the regulatory okay. body uh, like nabh or uh, mci or a, a national medical commission because it involves the doctors and it involves the hospital infrastructure where nabh is responsible for approval of this so is a no, multi even, sir, even our i doctor agency uh, control uh, nabh is will not prescribe prescription has to be validated by a doctor yeah i mean it's a multi agency so i think uh, this particular discussion may continue but yeah. now we are approaching or we are already through 12 o'clock the only uh, with your permission dr kalra if i give you if, if i give the last remark and then hand it over yeah. to you i think the, the we know it very well that the medicine is never 2 plus 2 4 yeah. and we all have to understand dr rai that this formula has to be understood by the legal system also and they yeah. understand it very well yes but at the same time we cannot do without technology at the technology in terms of uh, uh, ai is the one which will definitely help us in bringing accuracy and dealing in bulk yes. we in indian scenario we have to reach our community in such a way that ultimately either we have that much men power that okay i will look after each and every village each and every family if answer is no then can we develop a technology so that at least deeper penetration is there for the screening and then we can definitely select out and bring the person for treatment so the role of ai is developing very fast and dr jamkar you have given a wonderful review of what all happening in india and uh, all over the globe let us try to bring and but the outcome has to be correlated with the best possible clinical acumen so that it becomes 99% accurate if not 100% जैसे मेडिसिन में 100 परसेंट कोई चीज नहीं है तो 99 परसेंट तो वी हैव टू ब्रिंग द एक्यूरेसी विद दिस एम वी विल लाइक टू एनकरेज इंडिया इज वन कंट्री वेयर आई ऑलवेज से डॉक्टर के के कालरा आई मस्ट हैव टोल्ड यू दिस सेंटेंस द नंबर्स आर सो बिग द अनफॉर्चुनेट सफरिंग ऑफ सच अ बिग नंबर बिकम फॉर्चून फॉर मेडिकल एजुकेशन for research and for development 
of technologies like AI. So let us utilize our unfortunate situation of big numbers for the best possible. India can contribute maximum possible. A chota country kya contribute karega? It's all number game, Dr. Jamka. Yeah. For development of AI, it's all number game. Whether we are able to contribute 5 lakhs extra chest or 10 lakhs or MRI, more and more, perhaps accuracy will be more. With these remarks, thank you, Dr. Jamkar. Thanks all my colleagues for uh, sparing and contributing. Back to Dr. K.K. Kalra and Sora. Thank you, both the Aruns, today for a wonderful discussion and the session. And uh, definitely the use of AI is very, very important, essential, but definitely we need to first strengthen our infrastructure as well as the human power. We cannot ignore <coughs> the human uh, force. Definitely AI should be used with the objective to make healthcare more accessible, affordable, and timely to all kinds of society, whether it's a rural or urban. And definitely we must work towards AI, but a balanced approach definitely is required. We cannot replace a human with the total uh, AI machines, definitely as on date, till we are able to get some more uh, requirement needed as there is as a date. There's no clarity on the regulation part on these AI devices. So is a very good insight. Definitely we should work for use of uh, judicial use of AI so that quality care is available uh, to all the masses in our country. I thanks and conclude the session today with these remarks and see you next two weeks. I will not be available. Uh, I will request Saurabh to call, be coordinating with you all and to have these meetings. Thank you. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. Before, before you Bye. end, uh, Dr. Kalra, yeah. I just want uh, you to request everybody to submit their biodata or maybe brief uh, biosketch so that uh, we understand uh, which uh -huh. internet people we are discussing. So once I come back, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, no problem. This, Thank you. This